God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, for being so, so good to us. Not because we are good, Lord Jesus, but because you are good. You're a good, good Father, Lord. I love you so much.
Hi everyone, happy Sunday! My name is Audrey and welcome to Encounter Online Church Service. We're so thankful that you're spending a part of your weekend here with us. We're also happy to announce that we're streaming three times every Sunday at 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 9 p.m. So hope to see you there. Now let's begin our time of worship by praying the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello Church, welcome to IES Encounter Service. It's such a beautiful day to worship the Lord. So thank you for inviting us into wherever you are, wherever room you are in, whichever house you're in. So let's just lean in and be present and just worship God together. Let's worship the Lord. You are with me. What can separate us? You
Promises never fail. With this next song, I'm always reminded that in every situation that I'm in, God is greater than our fears. God is greater than our sickness. God is greater than our loneliness. God is greater than our shame. God is greater than our sins. He is always with me through it all. And He will always be there with you. And He will move that mountain in front of you again and again and again. So let's sing this song together with faith. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet your promise still stands great is your still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me yet oh never failed me yet I know the night won't last your Still in your 
your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. verse 3 it says that the Lord says call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known so church whenever you feel stuck just be reminded to call upon his name and he will answer you let's sing the song together I call you and so Your presence. Yeah. 
Thank you. 
What's up, ISM? It's your boy Jonathan, and I'll be bringing the announcement for today. If you're here for the first time, we have a welcome, and we would love to connect with you. Be sure to keep an eye on the live chat as there's going to be a pop up button that allows us to connect with you. Once you've completed the form, our team will get in touch with you soon. Don't you miss hanging out with friends of the church? Now, you don't have to worry about that anymore because after the service, we're going to be having a Zoom hangout session. Make sure to keep, uh, keep an eye on the live chat as we're going to post the link near the end of the service. You're not meant to do life alone. That's why we have Life Group. It's a place where we can hang out and discuss more about Jesus. If you're not planning in any Life Group, join us in our Wednesday Life Group session at 7.30 p.m. You can DM us on Instagram at isencounter for the Zoom link. If you want to be updated on all of our upcoming events, you can check out our social media at IS Encounter. That's all of the announcements for today. Once again, thank you so much for being here with us. Our hope and prayer are that you will be encouraged, empowered, and closer to Him than ever before. God bless. Greetings from Los Angeles. My name is Anthony. I'm the pastor here at IS Encounter. Welcome to my home, and thank you for welcoming us into your home for spending your Sundays with us, worshiping God together and seeking the Lord together. And I believe distance or location can't stop us from encountering God wherever we're at. Amen. And I believe that when we encounter Jesus, even one encounter with Jesus can change our lives. So I'm excited today to share what the team um, has been working on. We believe that God has laid something in our hearts and I want to share with you. So for the next two or three weeks or so, we're going to talk about what it means to belong. We believe that belonging is a basic human need. I think everyone has a need to belong. Everybody wants to belong. Belong to someone or belong to something. A sense of belonging brings value and brings meaning to our lives. Now, I know that this is an online service and we're currently not meeting in person. However, even as we're just meeting online, you can still belong to the Encounter family, to the Encounter community. You can be connected with us and do life together without even meeting in person. This is why we encourage you to chat with us. There's a live chat feature. You can request prayer. We want you to join the Zoom Hangout after the service. Join our live groups on Wednesday. You see, IES Encounter is a place where everyone can belong. doesn't matter where you're located, doesn't matter your background, where you come from, everyone can belong to one another. And most importantly, for us to know that we all can belong to God's family as His beloved children, and that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Because we belong in His family, we also belong in God's plans and God's purposes. Now, I know it's hard in 2020 because nothing has gone accordingly in 2020 nothing seemingly going right in 2020 and to be honest 2020 seems like it's a serious and unfortunate events am i right actually this is what i'm titling today's message is a series of unfortunate events i know all of us many of us are affected one way or another because of this pandemic well i want to encourage you i need to encourage myself i want to remind all of us that yes even in 2020, in the midst of this disaster, in the midst of this uh, disappointment, in the midst of the difficulties, I want to encourage you to embrace this season by trusting God, to trust in God's sovereignty over all that's going on. Everything that has occurred in our lives in this world, God still has a plan for us, for you and for me, for my life, for this world. And His plan is going to continue to go forward and it's going to be fulfilled. God knows exactly what's going on in your life. He knows exactly what's going on in your situation. And God has not forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about me. He knows our lives have been um, affected and the entire world has been affected and this virus has is, is changed everything. He knows the struggles that we face, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the loneliness, the sadness that we are currently facing. But rest assured, friends, 
God is still in control. God is sovereign over the coronavirus. God's plan and His purposes can and will be fulfilled. Nothing can stop God's plan for you, for me, for this world. God's plan is not on hold. God is not waiting for a vaccine uh, for corona. God is the answer for coronavirus. So I want to remind you, encourage you, encourage myself that God is still at work in the midst of this pandemic. Here's what Isaiah said in chapter 40. Have you not heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, meaning that he was in the beginning, he is now, and he's at the end. He is the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. We might not understand what's going on in the world, but God is never weak or weary. He's always at work. So, as I said, no one can measure the depth of his understanding. Listen to Paul's word regarding the understanding of his understanding of God's sovereignty. Paul wrote, uh, writes in Romans 8 verse 28, he says, And we know, he knows with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. You see, friends, God is deeply concerned with all that's going on in your lives and all that's going on in this world. And only God can make all that has occurred to work together for good because he's almighty He's all-powerful, and He is all-loving. You see, God will never abandon us. He will never forget about us. He's always at work, working towards our good. Amen? I know somebody needed, needed to hear this. I needed to hear this. And all of us need to be reminded of this truth. And this is God's word for us today. So thank you, Jesus, for knowing our needs and always providing us with your word at the most appropriate time. So before we continue, let's pray. Father God, we've come back to you today to seek you, to be with you, to be renewed and to be revived. Teach us, Lord, how to trust you during these difficulties. Help us to put our faith in you and only you. Help us not to lose hope, not to lose passion for life. Help us to get through this pandemic and to succeed. So Lord, teach us, inspire us, edify us, equip us through your word today. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So today I want to share two stories to you, two very different stories, different lives, different circumstances, different times. But these two stories have a common theme, a common takeaway that we can learn from. And I believe these two stories will inspire us, will help us to face our circumstances and will help us to get through our hardship and give us hope as we trust in God. So the first story is the life of Joseph. Now if you've never read the Bible, we can find the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 through 50. Joseph's story is basically a series of unfortunate events. His story begins in chapter 37 and the Bible tells us he was 17 years old. It says that Jacob, his father, loved Joseph more than any of his other children. There was 12 of them because Joseph has been born to him at an old age. So one day, Jacob, um, Joseph's father, made him a beautiful robe and his brothers hated Joseph because of that, because his brother, um, Jacob, loved um, Joseph more than everybody else. And it already tells us that Jake, uh, J Joseph was also a tattletale. So one day, Joseph had a dream and he told his brothers, and they hated him even more. Soon he had another dream and he told his brother, he says, listen, I had another dream. The sun, the moon, 11 stars bowed low before me. Now meaning the sun and the moon are his parents, the 11 stars are his brothers, they bowed before him. So you see dreams at that time were a big deal. In the ancient world, their dreams were thought um, to offer information of the divine realm. And so it was taken very seriously. And even, even like common people who have dreams, they believe it contained omen from the gods to let them know what the gods were up to, what they were doing. So 
just from this brief story, we know that Joseph was loved by his father. He had a special robe made to him. Joseph was favored by God because he received two different dreams for him. Things were going good um, for the 17 years old. So one day, the story continues, Joseph was summoned by Jacob to report on his brother. Go to the field, see how the flock is doing, see what your brother is up to, and report back to me. So Joseph went, and he found his brothers. So the story continues, as Joseph was approaching his brothers, they saw him, and here's what the Bible says, they made plans to kill him. There's definitely no brotherly love there. There's no bromance. There's bromance slaughter. That was a joke, by the way. So it says, verse 19, chapter 37, he says, Here comes that dreamer. Come on, let's kill him. Let's throw him into the cisterns or the well. We can tell our father that a wild animal ate him. And let's see what happens to his dreams. So it's one thing to say things out loud out of frustration. Now, I have two kids, Armin and Alexa. When they get into a fight, Armin goes, I don't want to play with Alexa until I'm 100, you know? He says things, but then two minutes later, he plays with her. So maybe when his brother says, let's kill him, I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're just saying things out loud, but they actually did it. So when Joseph arrived, they ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing, they grabbed him and they threw him into that well. And the well was empty, there was no water in it. Now the crazy thing is, Verse 25, after they threw him in, it says, then they were sitting down to eat. They just beat up their brother, they threw him in the well, and they were still hungry. As they were eating, they looked up, they saw a caravan of camels from the distance coming from them. These were Ishmaelites, traders going to Egypt. So one of his brother, Judah, said, what are we going to gain if we killed our brother? Right? We have to cover up his crime anyway. So instead of hurting him, why don't we sell him to the, Ishma- to the traders, right? After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. And so all the brothers agree. So when these traders came, um, the brothers pulled up Joseph. Joseph was probably thinking, okay, joke's over, guys. Get me out. But they sold Joseph to the traders for 20 pieces of silver. Now, 20 pieces of silver is two years of wages at that time. And so the traitors took him to Egypt. This will be the first of many unfortunate events that happened in Joseph's life. See, right now, all of a sudden, with one event, Joseph lost his identity. He lost his family. He lost his nationality. He lost his freedom. And now he's a slave. I'm not sure which hurt Joseph more, to be betrayed by his brother or him becoming a slave, right? So we, the story continues. So these traders, they arrive in, G, uh, in Egypt and they sold Joseph to Potiphar. Now, they could have sold Joseph to anyone. And so Potiphar, he's actually an officer of Pharaoh, not just an officer. Um, Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. He was the captain of the palace guard. So as I said, Joseph could have been sold to anyone, but God guided Joseph to Potiphar, a high ranking Egyptian official, the captain of the guard. So even though Joseph was abandoned um, by his brother, he was sold as a slave, God never left Joseph. God never abandoned Joseph. God still had plans and purposes for Joseph's life. Perhaps this is happening to you. Maybe your life is not going as planned. Maybe you've experienced or you're going through unfortunate events this year. But rest assured, God is still with you. God is fully aware of what's going on in your life. God cares so very much for your well-being. And God is still working out His plans in your life. You are, I am still right in the middle of God's plan, regardless of all that has happened. So we can see here, chapter 39, verse 2, it says that the Lord was with Joseph. So even though he was sold as a slave, the Lord was with Joseph. Now, because the Lord was with Joseph, he says, he succeeded in everything he did. He served in the home of his Egyptian master. Now, his master noticed and realized that the Lord was was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. So Joseph didn't have any training. Joseph didn't have any work experience. 
He was only 17 years old. He was the youngest of the brothers. But how was it that Joseph was successful in everything he did, right? Well, the Bible tells us because the Lord was with Joseph. God gave favor upon Joseph. Yes, he was a slave, but he was a successful slave. He was blessed and he was favored. It's not the ideal situation for Joseph, but nevertheless, Joseph succeeded in everything he did as a slave. And it says, from that day, when Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar for Joseph's sake. All of his household affairs was smooth, his crops, his livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't have to worry about anything um, except what kind of food to eat. So basically, Joseph was the man, right? Seems like finally things were going well in Joseph's life. Now, as the story continues, it says that Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. Now, the Bible doesn't mention too many handsome or beautiful. That means Joseph was really handsome. He was ripped. He was probably had a six-pack. He was a well-built young man. He's the man, right? And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. It says, come and sleep with me, she demanded. She didn't entice him. She didn't lure him. She demanded him to sleep with her. But Joseph refused. He said, look, lady, look, 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 look. My master trusts me with everything in his entire house. No one here has more authority than me. He's held nothing back except for you because you're his wife, obviously. How could I do such a wicked thing? And here's what Joseph said. It would be a great sin against God. But she kept on pressing him day after day after day, demanding him, sleep with me, sleep with me. But he refused and he kept um, away from her as much as possible. Now, one day he was in the house, he was cleaning, there's nobody around. Potiphar's wife came to him again and he ran away, but he left his cloak there. Now, Potiphar came home and he told, he basically, she accused Joseph of raping her. Now, Potiphar was very furious of his wife's story and of how Joseph treated her. So he took Joseph and he threw him in prison where the king's prisoners were held and there he remained. Now, I just want to tell you, you pause here a little bit. In total, Joseph was a slave to Potiphar and he was in that prison for 13 years. See, Joseph was wrongly accused of rape, but he ended up in prison, which is a good thing. Now, how is that a good thing? Well, Potiphar could have just killed him, could have just executed him for attempting to rape his wife. But instead, he was in prison. So Joseph finds himself in another unfortunate event. But God protected him and guard, uh, guarded Joseph. Even if no one knew the truth, God knew. God sees everything. God knew that Joseph didn't want to sin against him. So even though Joseph was in prison, he was wrongly accused, God still has a plan and a purpose for his life. God's plan didn't stop because Joseph was somehow thrown in prison. We're going to continue to read on and we'll see that God was able to make all things work together and God eventually vindicated Joseph. Verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph in prison and he showed him his faithful love and the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Again, the Lord was with Joseph, even though he was an unfortunate event. Now he's in prison, but the Lord was with him and he succeeded again. And he became the favorite with the warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of everything and everything in the prison went well because the Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Four different times in this chapter affirms that the Lord was with Joseph. And this is the word of the Lord for us today. God is with us. God has not forgotten us. God is still working out his plans and his purposes in our lives. So we shouldn't give up. We should embrace the season. We should continue to live our lives. We should do our best in all that we do and wait upon 
God to provide, wait upon God to provide the breakthrough. So we need to embrace the season where we're at because regardless of what's going on, we are still right in the middle of God's plan. So you see, God protected Joseph. Instead of being executed, he's alive in prison. And while in, he's in prison, God was also preparing Joseph for God's greater purpose in and through his life. So while in prison, Joseph interprets two dreams. Now remember when he was 17, God gave him two dreams, but then that led him into being a slave and in prison. Now in prison, um, he interpreted two dreams from the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. He says, interpreting dreams is God's business. Tell me your dreams, I'll not let you know. So Joseph interprets his dreams and he says, please remember me and do me a favor when all things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I didn't do anything to deserve it. So Joseph's interpretation uh, of the dreams came true. However, the chief cupbearer, he forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. Now, from that point, two years has passed, okay? And I said before, Joseph stayed in Potiphar in prison for 13 years. So people will fail us, but God will never fail us. People might forget about us, but God never forgets. Now, two years later, after that incident, um, Pharaoh had a dream. And it was such a horrible dream that he gathered all the magicians and all the wise men of Egypt, but they couldn't interpret the dream. And so finally, the cupbearer remember about Joseph. Oh yeah, he was the one who interpreted my dream. So Pharaoh calls him and Joseph hears about the dream. And if you read the story that Joseph interprets the dream, and this is the response from Pharaoh. Since God revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or as wise as you are. Mind you, he's been in prison for 13 years. You will be in charge of my court. What? And all my people will take orders from you, from prison to taking orders. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand, placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed them in fine linen clothing and hung a gold chain around his neck. Joseph went from prison, now he's just decked out in bling. Then he had Joseph ride in a chariot, um, reserved for his second in command. And wherever Joseph went, there's people who shouted, kneel down. Right? So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt and Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will live a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Wow. What an amazing, what a turn of event. From sold as a slave, from wrongly accused of rape, being in prison, now he is rightly appointed to be the second in charge of all Egypt. Friends, nothing is impossible for our God. Now when this happened, Joseph was 30 years old when he was appointed number two of Egypt. This was 13 years in the making, right? Filled, that 13 years filled with unfortunate events, but with God, Joseph survived. And not only did he su survive, but he succeeded. Even in those unfortunate events, there was still success because God was with him every step of the way. See, God guided him to Potiphar. God helped Joseph to succeed in his household. Then um, God guarded him to Joseph to be to, uh, from execution and he went to prison. Now in prison, God helped them to succeed. And now God has helped Joseph to be number two in Egypt. You see, God was always involved in Joseph's life. Maybe at some parts of his life, it didn't seem like it. When he was thrown in by his brothers, when he was sold, can you imagine the ride from, um, from where Joseph was all the way down to Egypt you know, we don't know if he was chained, he was in a cage. What was he thinking, right? Or when he was falsely accused, he was trying to do the right thing. Yes, even though there was a lot of bad things that's happened, but Joseph continued on. 
God's plan continued to unfold in the life of Joseph even in the midst of those unfortunate events. Regardless of the circumstances that Joseph faced, God was still with him and God was still very much involved in his life. Now, if God can do that for Joseph, God can do that for you and for me. Amen? I know many of us are facing a series of unfortunate events due to this pandemic. Perhaps you've lost your income, perhaps you've lost your job, perhaps you've lost your loved ones. Um, there's a, many things that's happened. But I want to assure you that God's plan will continue to go forth. God's plan will be fulfilled in your life, in my life. God will continue to do His part for this world. God will protect you. God will guide you. God will help us to succeed. So we need to embrace this season and trust in God's plan. Embrace where we are right now because where you are right now in life, you are exactly in the middle of God's plan. So I believe that with all my heart that God is still working in our lives. So don't take my word for it. I said we're going to listen to two stories. So the second story, you are going to hear from our lovely sister, Adisti. She's going to share how in the midst of this pandemic, God didn't forget about her and God helped her to succeed. So let's hear the story together. Hi everybody, um, my name is Adisti and I would like to share a quick testimony with you today. So this is actually in relation to COVID. So as we all know, um, COVID has been impacting our lives in a very significant way. At least I can speak that for myself. Uh, you know, probably some of us um, is not really, are not really a big fan of, you know, working from home. Maybe we actually like to do church at church and not at home. Maybe some of us really want to go to travel, but we cannot. Um, you know, that's me. I'm talking about myself uh, because of this COVID situation. Um, and it seems like, you know, probably nothing good can come out from this situation, right? So I got to the point where I was so convinced that, ah, oh, this is so bad. This is so... I feel like I've just been surrounded by like so many negativity um, and it's depressing and that's probably nothing nothing good can come out from this, right? Um, and I happen to not be correct. Like apparently there is something good that can come out from this situation. Um, and um, I would like to give you a little bit of a background story about why I came to that conclusion. So uh, this is actually in relation to my, I guess like my education stuff. Um, so I actually, I have studied abroad for a while and I came back around like two years ago, um, but I still somehow have the desire, you know, in my heart to study abroad again. Um, so I have communicated that with my parents, with my family, um, and they are very supportive of my dream and my desire. Um, and they said like, you know, obviously pray to God about it um, and let's, let's do what you can do right now. Let's try and prepare as much as we can, try and work hard, save up, you know, do all the research that you have to do and things like that. Um, and yeah, so I have been doing that, you know, for the last sort of like couple of years. Um, and I have communicated with the, you know, agent related to the school and things like that as well. Um, and it, we came to a conclusion that maybe you can actually go, um, you know, and study this year. So I decided to actually pick New Zealand as the country and this particular school. I have already made up my mind and I've, I've made my decision that this is going to be the place. Uh, but then COVID happened, so all those plans that we have made and, you know, all, all this sort of like preparation needs to be put on hold because, um, you know, the borders closed, there's no way I can actually get into the country and start studying. So uh, that was um, that was pretty disappointing for me as I was pretty excited, you know, to, to actually study again. I know I'm one of those weird people that get excited about studying. <laughs> I know some people will be like, how can anybody get excited about studying again? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely one of those weird ones. <laughs> but yeah, so I was already super excited, but that had to, you know, be put on hold. Um, so I was pretty sad. I was pretty sad, but because of the whole COVID situation, uh, the school ended up doing something um, a little bit different. They made a few changes uh, where they actually um, offer a blended program. So just to put a bit more information here, I was actually applying for a postgraduate study. So it's actually um, above bachelor and below master. 
Um, and obviously I had like some time, um, you know, and, and thinking like, oh, it would be very nice if I can take master instead. But after doing like a proper sort of like research, a, a master degree just didn't fit my budget. So postgraduate degree was what I was going to take, right? And I was happy with it. I was already like made my decision and it's already sort of like confirmed that that's what I'm going to take. Though at the back of my mind, like I, I, I knew that master would probably be a better option. but. You know what, so that, that kind of like, um, that happened. Um, and then um, the school offered a blended program because of the whole COVID situation, um, where some of the parts of, you know, of the course will be done online and the rest of it, you know, will be done like offline on site when the board is open and students can sort of like start studying in New Zealand. And after doing more research, um, there's actually a bit of changes in terms of the price and the fee um, and because some of it are actually um, going to be done online it's slightly cheaper and then i found out that i can actually afford the master degree through the blended program and the one that i can't afford in the first place if it was to be done right away in new zealand so i felt that was very magical and i thought it was very amazing that wow it, it turned out to be like that and, and it turned out to bring, I guess, like lots of benefits for me as well because like, you know, I get to still spend some time with, with the people here. I get to study and work at the same time as well. I get to like save up more and, and like all that kind of stuff. So it turned out to be, it turned out to be a lot more positive than I thought it would be um, because, because of like, you know, the whole COVID thing. So I thought it was so magical and I felt like that was, you know, God uh, bringing breakthrough in my life, bringing miracles in my life. And it definitely didn't look like what I thought it would look. It didn't look like my plan. And you know, I'm definitely one of those people that love planning things. So I want things to go this way and that way and that way. And I'll get like, you know, nerdy trying to like jot down all the, all the steps and things like that. But then again, I felt like God's just like, you know, my way is not your way. And um, it turns out to be way better than I could ever expect. You know, so I thought that was so cool. I thought that was magical. I thought it was it was super encouraging to experience and see that God hasn't forgotten about me. Like you know, he 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 still cares for me and my desire and my dreams. And he actually came through and he he made it possible. So I thought it was so amazing. Um, and I think like you know, especially in a situation like COVID, we can really it can be very easy for us to sort of like. Um, affected by the by our surroundings and forget like how powerful and how mighty our God is and I think I just really want to share this with you and remind you that he's still a God that can make miracles you know he, he made miracles in my life and he can do that to you too you know so he's still a God that heals he's still a God that opens up ways even in a situation um, that we think that is just simply not possible so he doesn't forget about me he doesn't forget about you he promised all the good stuff and all the great, you know, plans and future that he has for us. And he doesn't forget that just because COVID happened, like, you know, probably like in any sort of like situation, it's just not going to affect him. You know, he's still a God that will bring us through different phases of our lives um, and actually get us to that plan, um, you know, all the good future and good plans that he has for us. So, you know, if he can do that in my life, he can do that in your life too. You know, if he has done it in the past um, and maybe you feel like, oh, I don't know, I don't think God's doing it for me right now, or maybe even for the future, um, I guess like that, you know, at least that's not what he's showing to me and, and in my life, like he's still a God that made miracles in the past, made miracles right now and even in the future as well. So I just really wanna encourage you to not lose hope and not lose some hold of him, not lose grip of him because He's still a powerful and mighty God, no matter what the situation is. He's still a God that doesn't change, you know? He's still a God that does all the amazing stuff for, for you and me, for, for his children, and for all people, really. Um, and I just really want to encourage you that, you know, to, to I guess, not forget about that. So yeah, um, I hope this, you know, this, this can, can be an encouragement for you. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening to my story and God bless you. Adisti, thank you for sharing your story with us, for sharing God's goodness in your life. You see, friends, even in the midst of this pandemic, God doesn't stop working. God is not on break. He doesn't grow tired. He's not weary. He's not putting your life on hold because of this pandemic. So that's why 
we need to keep going. We need to keep pursuing our dreams and our goals and our passion. It's so important for us to continue to do that. The only reason Joseph was able to succeed because he never gave up. Joseph continued to work hard in every situation. As a, pris- as a slave, as a prisoner, Joseph worked hard and God helped him to succeed. God will continue to work. God will continue to unfold his plans and his purposes in our lives. But we must also continue to do our work. We must continue to pursue. We must continue to be responsible uh, for the things that's in our lives. Amen. So next week, we're going to continue Joseph's story. And we're going to see that God not only had a plan for Joseph, but God also had a greater purpose in Joseph's life. Joseph was blessed and he will be used by God to bless many people, to bless nations, to bless generations to come. See, all that Joseph experienced and endured, God used all of that for his greater plans and purposes. So make sure you tune in next week and to hear the rest of the story. Now, before we end our time, I want to pray for you. For those of us who are experiencing um, and enduring hardship, perhaps it's been one unfortunate event after another in 2020. Friends, I'm in the same boat as you. And so let's pray together. Lord, you are a faithful God. Your love endures forever. You can make all things work for good. You were faithful to Joseph and you helped him to succeed. You're faithful to Addis and you helped her to succeed. Would you please help my brothers and my sisters who are struggling? Would you renew their mind, their hope, and their faith? Would you please help them to succeed as they continue to work, as they continue to pursue their dreams and their goals and their passion? Friends, God is still working out His plans in your life. God has not forgotten you. God is with you. God will do His part, but you must also do your part. Don't be idle in this season. Don't give up. You must continue to keep going. Embrace where you are right now. The season will eventually pass. God can and He will make a way so that you can succeed. Amen. Now, immediately after the benediction song, take advantage of the opportunity to connect with the Encounter family, with the Encounter community. Join the Zoom Hangout. Uh, On Wednesdays, we have a life group. Join that. So have a great Sunday. Have a blessed week. Be the church. Know that your Father in Heaven loves you so much. He cares so much about you. Know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ not only saves us, but is sufficient for all of our needs. And know that you are never alone. God's Spirit has chosen to dwell within us. The Holy Spirit resides in us. He is near. He is ready to guide, to help, and to comfort us. So happy Sunday, IES Encounter. Till next time, peace out. Let's declare this promise that God has given to all of us. Let's sing together. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make His face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward
God be upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.